Hi. Today we're going to be talking about Don't Let the Door Hit Ya, or a piece involving Merv Pumpkinhead. Merv Pumpkinhead is not somebody new to my channel. He, I've published a few videos featuring him as the main character, so let me just kind of get this out of the way from the from the beginning here and let you know that this is not an original character of mine. Uh, he is a favorite character of mine from the Neil Gaiman Sandman series, which is a, a series of comic books that was published uh, late 80s mid uh, up until about the mid 90s or so. Um, I've talked about Merv before, so I'll just kind of cut to the chase and let you know that he's a very uh, cynical character. He's, he's got a very smart aleck kind of attitude towards him. He's uh, very much this kind of hardworking, blue-collar type worker, and as a result has an opinion uh, on everybody that he deems to be... Uh, you know, rude to him or something like that. So if somebody, you know, makes a mess and he's got to clean it up, he's going to clean it up, but he's certainly got a few choice words to say about it. That really kind of gets us into what the title of this piece is, you know, Don't Let the Door Hit You. Now, I drew this piece for a series of Halloween pictures I created uh, for a game that, that I put together for some work colleagues. Um, it was a Halloween-type themed game where it was all about the horror movies and questions and answers related to that. And Merv was kind of the uh, avatar-ish type host. So there were several pictures involving Merv doing introductions to a category or something similar. And this last one here, the last one I'm going to be publishing featuring Merv uh, is uh, kind of the last slide, so to speak, in that whole game show. So you'll see the uh, kind of reframing of this in a little bit where the uh, exit door is behind him. And that was meant to be something of a representation to say we're at the end of the game and we're going to be uh, kind of putting this whole thing to bed. Uh, title of the piece, again, don't let the door hit you, you know, on the way out, so to speak. So that, that that's kind of the idea here. Merv is uh, very much appropriate uh, uh, to that particular pattern of speech there, the don't let the door hit you. Um, I, I remember growing up with a more smart alecky kind of finishing to that. I believe my, my dad, uh, who had a mouth on him from time to time, would, would often say, don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split you. Uh, very, very, uh, uh, maybe not necessarily politically correct these days, but still a little bit funny nonetheless, and I think appropriate to, what's, uh, to something that Merv would indeed say. Uh, so, you know, again, this is going to be the last Merv piece we're going to see for a while, but he is fun to draw, not only because of the character and the words that you can put into his mouth, but because of the shapes that he embodies as well. Uh, the big round head, the, the, the lanky, tall limbs on him uh, just lend themselves to exaggeration. So you can get away with a lot if you want to kind of push anatomy and stuff to that, uh, like that. Um, he also has that cigar hanging out of his mouth, and I've always really enjoyed kind of drawing some of the effects that go along with cigarettes, and maybe that's just because because I was a longtime smoker for like 20 years or something like that. But the idea of that glowing ember that sits on the end of the cigar there is something that's always fascinated me and trying to recreate it was, was a real pleasure of mine. And again, maybe that goes back to my old nicotine addiction. I'm not sure, but um, I definitely enjoyed drawing it along with the little ashes that kind of came down from beneath it as well. Uh, one of the things that also was a lot of fun, although I'd, I'd done this in a couple of other Merv pieces, was drawing the smoke, which really wasn't all that big of a trick. It was just a matter of finding a brush that gave me something of a cloudy kind of dry brush effect and then just lowering the opacity once I had the shape in the way that I liked it. So you'll see that go in really, really quick towards the end. And I just want to kind of point out that, that it wasn't any really significant piece uh, of, of you know, fancy digital magic or anything if that's, that's something you're kind of curious about. Um, there are a couple mistakes here I might also point out uh, while we're at it as, uh, as well. Uh, let me just kind of say here that I'm very well aware of the fact that this enormous head that Merv has really almost causes a, a, an enormous shadow right underneath of it. So you really shouldn't even be able to see his neck or the majority of his bow tie or even his shoulders for that matter. And I've tried to represent that a little bit with something of a uh, kind of a a faded cast shadow, but the reality is, is that I didn't get it really even deep enough, dark enough, or even ex as extensive enough. The, the reality is you wouldn't be able to see a lot of things about an inch or two below where that pumpkin sits. But, you know, this is a fantasy piece, and, and I really kind of felt the need to kind of show off the bow tie and the shoulders to kind of show off that lankiness so you don't see a lot of his frame. Chalk it up to artistic license, but I will say that I'm pretty proud of this piece. Again, it's the last we're going to see him for a little while, at least until maybe next Halloween. So in the meantime, I hope you like it. Please take some time to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Share with some friends, and I'll be back with some more content soon. I hope you enjoyed this one, and I'll be back again. Thank you.